So this is part two of the tutorial for the mini junk journal kit that I have available in my shop. And in this tutorial, I am going to show you how I bound these pages. And I'm going to show you how to make the cover for this journal. I did this um, as a hidden, with a hidden spine. And there are countless ways to bind your journal. This is not necessarily the best way, but this is the way that I did it. So let's get started binding your journal. This piece is the template for the hidden spine. The pattern piece is so that you have a pretty spine that you'll see between each signature. This is the blank template for marking your holes in your spine and for the cardboard that you'll sew your pages into. I measure and cut this longer than the template because I thought I was going to need to know where to place it, but you don't need to do that if you fold your spine cover um, before you glue everything on. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So I scored this hidden spine cover um, first so it's easy to see where to place the cardboard that you sew your signatures into um, and also so that it's easy to fold. So you just glue this right onto the cardboard that you cut out. And like I said, I cut it longer, but you don't have to do that because you'll be able to see where to place it between the scores that you put um, in this cover or the folds that you made. So then you um, just poke holes right in the little dots that I have there on the template. Um, and this is for four uh, pages. So if you want to use more, you'll have to adjust this size. And so now to um, sew your pages in, you measure your thread a little less than three times the length of the spine of your journal. I'm doing pages and not signatures because this was made with cardstock, so these are really thick and signatures would just be too thick. So you start by going um, into the middle um, hole on the back of the spine and come through your page. And then you just leave a little bit at the end so that you'll have something to tie. And then you go over to the right side and you go in from the inside of the page and through the spine. And then you bring it over all the way to the other side and go in from the back and through the page. And then you go back into the first hole that you started with through the page and then through the spine. And then you just pull it to make everything tight and make sure that your thread goes around like your two pieces of thread on either side of that middle thread. Pull it tight and then tie it in a knot. And then you do this with each page. You do the same thing with each page. I'm using a book binding thread. I got a little book binding kit from Amazon. It wasn't very much money and it's got all of the needles and the waxed book binding thread in there. It's got the awl and a bone folder in there. So. 
So now this part is for the actual cover. I have a template in the kit for the back and the front and the spine. And you just trace this template on some cardboard and cut them out. And then I am using uh, masking tape to connect these together. You can use masking tape or duct tape. And then you just lay it down with the sticky side up and place your pieces on there, leaving a little bit of a gap between the spine and the cover. And then you put another piece of tape with the sticky side down to cover where the edges come together. And then you peel it off of your surface and just cut everything so it's all even. Now this cover is made for a journal with four sets of pages in there. Um, again, if you're going to make a journal with more pages, then you're gonna have to adjust the size and this cover is pretty big on the uh, sheet of eight and a half by 11. So you might have to use something else for the cover if you make a bigger journal, because I don't think that you can increase the size of this too much and still have it fit on an eight and a half by 11. Mark off the edges of the cover. And then I like to score it just because it makes it easier to fold. And then I cut off the corners and fold everything in. And then you glue the cardboard part to the cover paper and then glue down the corners and then each edge. And then I just like to fold it over just to make sure that everything is fits properly and the paper is not too tight on there. And then I'm just gluing the back of the whole set of pages and the hidden spine. And bring the glue all the way to the edges. And then just place it right in the center of the cover. So press everything down uh, with a bone folder um, just to make sure the glue is uh, nice and secure. And then I go in between each set of pages on the spine and I press that down too, just to make sure the glue is really adhered to the spine. And then these, these papers I just used, um, one of the patterns in the kit I printed and cut out. I used the template to trace around it so I knew how big to make these papers for the inside, but you could actually print the template on this pattern and cut it out. And then I like to 
go ahead and ink the whole thing. And then you can decorate your cover however you want. I put a little closure on mine. You could use any of the fussy cuts from the kit to glue on the front and use lace and ribbon and whatever you want to decorate the cover. So this is the finished journal. This is what it looks like when it's all complete. The pages are nice and snug in there and everything is really cute. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials for my kits and for other junk journaling ideas. Thanks everybody. Goodbye.